Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Lisa Vickers. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it really does mean a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I'm a transformational coach and trainer who can assist you to heal your past, create your future, and transform your present so that you can take charge of your destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life progression, past life regression, angelic Reiki, angel oracle cards, and guided meditations to assist you if you feel lost and help you get clear on your reason for being here. And I've also created several transformational packages, a journey through lifetimes, as well as a six-week guided meditation series to help you gain the confidence to take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation and oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Lisa Vickers, who will be talking about how we can be our own healer and how we are healing from this and previous lives. Now, Lisa runs multiple businesses to reawaken the ancient knowledge within us. Working intuitively and spiritually, she works with the golden thread of energy. And after embracing her soul's purpose, she realized that she was here to assist others in their awakening and understanding their divine power through healing trauma from this life and past lives, bridging the gap from the present through the past to create an aligned future. Lisa believes we all came here with a sole purpose, to learn, to grow and to assist with the collective healing of the planet. Now she uses many tools in her practice to help her clients be who they were born to be and free themselves from soul contracts, karmic ties and align to their soul's purpose, awakening their inner warrior to birth their purpose and their passion. Now with testimonials such as, I feel so much happier and less stressed, I look forward to my session and love how much more confident I am. And I tried hypnotherapy with Elisa after feeling anxious and stressed. It really helped me and made me feel great. And I had the most amazing relaxation therapy today. Lisa made me feel so relaxed and chilled. I was a bit skeptical at first, but really took to it and it really worked. I 100% recommend Lisa. She was amazing. So without further delay, hello, Lisa. Welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hey, thank you so much for having me. I am great. <clears throat> I'm so excited to be here and um, looking forward to sharing whatever pearls of wisdom come from spirits. <laughs> I wish it comes from them. <laughs> Excellent. That's that's what we like. Yeah, we like it when Spirit of the Universe will um, bring, bring us messages. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts live or on the replay, as both Lisa and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Lisa, why don't you tell us more about your journey and how we can unleash the soul rebel within? Thank you so much. I guess all of our journeys start in the beginning when we're children and I find um, working with clients and looking into my own kind of self and my journey that our gifts that we find are present in adults kind of are our pain points as a child. So before the age of seven obviously we take all stimuli in, we're open, we haven't got into that kind of um, awareness of what society expects of us. So as a child, I played with energy. I loved energy. I'd have dreams about things that would happen, but I also was so empathetic and felt all the people's emotions and what was going on in the collective so much that it was overwhelming. And, you know, most of my reports of a child were Lisa's an anxious child and um, Lisa worries a lot. And I was, like I literally would have scabs on my head from um being anxious and worrying and because i kind of had this inner knowing of what people needed i would become what they needed without really realizing it um i was entrenched in people pleasing entrenched in the good girl 
um, my mum and dad did the best they could. And I think we're kind of the generation that's saying, you know, this stops with us. We've incarnated to say, you know, it stops here. We were moving into a new paradigm. We're changing things. And yeah, those that came before us didn't do <laughs> the best of jobs at times, but they did the best they could. Like yeah. Every generation did a little bit better than the one before. We wouldn't be where we are now if they all hadn't have done their own little leaps. Um, we've got a big leap because that's what's needed right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's tricky. But so in the beginning, I didn't even know who I was. I remember um, a random epiphany moment came from me watching a film and, and somebody in the film didn't even know what eggs they liked. They were a fully grown adult and they didn't even know what type of eggs they liked because they'd always been what others needed. And this just penny dropped. And I'd, I'd always been doing spiritual work. But, you know, some things just activate something within you, something just as silly as a, a line in a film or something from a book. And I thought, wow, I don't even know what how I like my eggs because if someone offers to make me them, I want it to be as easy as possible for them. Mm. I don't know how to make a decision because I've never really been empowered to because I've always thought, well, my needs aren't as important as the person who I'm with. And these are all things that, you know, we take on from our gifts, but also society teaches us. Yeah. I'm really adamant when my daughter's playing with something that if she's playing with it, she doesn't have to give it up. When she's finished, she can. But just all these little things teach us that other people are more important. And um, we're all important, but we have to meet our own needs first. And I never did that as a child. It was only in doing my own work that I realised all of these things. All I wanted to do as a child was, was change the world. I always said, I just want to change the world. I want to make the world a better place. And then as an adult, I realised the only thing that I can change is myself. And because we have this collective consciousness, because our electromagnetic field contributes to the one around the earth, in changing myself, I am changing the world. <laughs> Um, and, I, and I fell down the, the rabbit holes of all of the amazing things out there, like human design and, you know, soul contracts and looking at where we'd been in past lives and um, what, like, Stasi there was from and things. And it just kept coming back, this rebel, this rebel. And I thought, Do you know what, actually, as much as I was entrenched in the good girl, I have always been this rebel. And um, I had so much work to do. Like, I actually... I hated being a woman. I hated women because all of my experiences with women were not very nice experiences and, you know, trapped in the unhealed divine feminine of competing with each other and people not really wanting you to be yourself. And then um, when I looked back at my journey, I thought, actually, I've always stood for that divine feminine and, and women being who they are and who they need to be for each other. I never hated women. I never hated being a woman. I just hated what we were doing to each other. Yeah. And then I started really working on healing my divine feminine and, and what that looked like and then helping others to sit with that and, and work on their own. So the real passion for me came with empowering my clients when they came to me to say, I can't heal you. I am a healer, we're all healers, but the only person I can heal is me. I can hold space, I can facilitate for you, but I cannot heal you because that's your journey. And we all came here to heal from all of those contracts and vows and things we've taken on in past lives. And I went into my hypnotherapy, like I was a primary school teacher and I went into hypnotherapy because as a child, my parents are really logical and, you know, talking to things that aren't there and, you know, they were just like, just stop saying these things. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Stop, okay. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Um, so I tried to be as logical and clinical as I could and it just never happened. That wasn't me and the clients I was attracting weren't me. And when I was taking people back through um, what I perceived as their trauma in this life and getting them to before seven because that's where it all starts, and then realised that whatever they came in with, they'd brought because they wanted to learn lessons from previous lives. So that's how that wonderful golden thread came. And then I began to see this lovely golden thread like through my mind's eye and kind of feel my own and how that was out into the world. And 
really then worked on the tough stuff of embracing that rebel and that's the tricky things even now no matter how long i've been doing it when i say the word no it's not easy and i can yeah. still sometimes have a physiological response to saying no in some cases <laughs> but oh, yeah. when we go to somebody and they assist us our work's only just begun because we have to apply it and i think that's my um greatest passion in you know letting people know that there is no magical rainbow of healed at the end this is a lifelong journey and when we have reached that rainbow we're ready to go on to the next life <laughs> and no one's in a rush for that are they? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Well, I'm not coming back, so. Um, <laughs> is this your last one? This is my last one, yeah. But yeah. that does mean that I've still got 50, 60 or years left because I've got a lot of work to do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I think um, in terms of finding your inner soul rebel, it's looking at your golden thread. So what are the things that have come up for you over and over and over again in your life? where are the parts that still really trigger you you know we all still have elements that we need to work on and, and they show up in our triggers um who are you putting on a pedestal who are you putting on a pedestal and why what are you wanting to see in them and that's a, a really big passion project i think for me because nobody puts themselves on a pedestal we put them on it and then when we realize their humanness were resentful of them for it. And this was a real learning thing for me. I thought my dad was an absolute superhero. Uh, and, and then when I realised he wasn't, I was so resentful of him. And then I realised how far <laughs> from being a superhero he was. <laughs> and, and that got worse. <laughs> and I can laugh now because I'm okay with all of that. But that was really hard. That, like, that took a lot of abuse of self and things to realise. So to embrace your inner soul rebel, it's really going into that darker side of yourself and doing it in a non-judgment way. And when I say a non-judgment way, it's impossible not to judge. Like we literally survive from making judgments. And when we make snap judgments that aren't particularly very nice about people, it's not shaming and guilting yourself afterwards because you can't control that judgment. It's just understanding that non-judgment is non-attachment to the judgment. Yeah. Feel it, release it, let it go. Then yeah. think that snap judgment what's that telling me about myself so looking at your judgments and turning that in when it comes to leaning into something as amazing as being a rebel and standing in your power that comes with a lot of really uncomfortable stuff first and you know it always makes me laugh when we portray this idea of a spiritual awakening as being this beautiful flower opening or this gorgeous experience when really when you're peeling another i always call it like peeling away an onion when you're peeling another layer of the onion it's like it's mud and it's blood and it's it's really hard isn't it yeah. and then the symptoms afterwards as you are ascending into that next level or whatever you know the human words don't do it justice no. that's really hard because you get all these physical symptoms so what my passion is, is for people to find their power, but understand that it, it comes with work and it comes with understanding of self. And one of the best things that you can do to stand in your power is the word no. It really is the simplest thing. The best self-care that we can have is boundaries and saying no when we need to. And it's the hardest because we are conditioned to put others first and to feel selfish when we put ourselves first. And um, we can only give people what we have within us. If we don't have it, we can't give it. And yes, we all came here in service, but our greatest service to others is service to self. Yeah, totally. Um, totally. It's, it's like that analogy, isn't it? You know, if you're in a plane that's going down, you put the mask on yourself first before you put it on your children yeah absolutely <laughs> it's funny that you should say that um I, uh, two of my businesses i have with a business partner and that is her favorite saying she says it in a lot of our training so it absolutely is that you know and self-care is all of the things that make us uncomfortable um, and we're so afraid of 
being uncomfortable mm. because we're taught from a young age that certain emotions are emotions that shouldn't really be felt and expressed when actually it's really important you know there's nothing wrong with anger there's nothing wrong with sadness they're just emotions and when we're uncomfortable with them as children that's when we're uncomfortable with them as adults that's why we can't hold space for each other in all of our emotions because we've never been taught to and i'll stop there i'll go down a rabbit hole of the education <laughs> system and <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, we won't go down the. Yeah, we, 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 a lot of the shows that do we cover the education. You know, it's sort of like we brush on the education, and what should, or, or what is, or it was what is the best possible way, and what isn't the best possible way that's being done at the at, at, at the moment. And I think everyone that I've that I've ever had on my show literally agrees. Um, with, you know, with 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 the um, with with the education system, shall we say? Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, you know, my I always say, you know, that I think um, as soon as um, a woman finds she is pregnant, then um, antenatal should include guy should include meditation yeah. during birth, Absolutely. meditation after birth, meditation. Yeah nursery med you know just meditation all the all the way through because people would be so much more understanding of each other they'd be so much calmer they'd understand a lot more um uh, with it and it's free you know yeah. you it doesn't it doesn't cost anything and you can do it anywhere <laughs> exactly exactly so 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 in my head i just can't understand why but you know I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not a politician or anything so uh, mm. I'll, I'll leave that to <laughs> but, but yeah you know the fact that there are more people that are waking up and going actually we could we, there, there is more to the education system than just uh, um, uh, English and maths yeah absolutely and, uh, so, so 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 you're obviously because um, you're aware of this and obviously um, you say your your daughter so you're kind of like bringing her up as, as differently to how you were brought up yeah absolutely um as much as i can non-judgment you know allowing her to express herself as much as possible she's only 18 months old so you know and understanding that all behavior is communication you know she's talking to me when she can't talk to me she's talking to me in any way that she can um and you know exposing her to things like crystals and how she can feel them and um, sound vibrations and things and she loves playing with my oracle cards I have to be pretty careful because she likes to put them in her mouth and bend them but yeah. <laughs> and just you know the main thing for me with her will be allowing her to say no you know I'm really really powerful about that if she looks at me because she's uncomfortable with someone else said no just say no and I'll, and I'll put my hand up you know just say no I'll stop and they, they have to stop and I'll, I'll never say like oh, I used to hate as a child being made to go and cuddle and kiss people so I'll, yeah. I'll always say would you like to give them a cuddle goodbye would you like to give someone a kiss on the cheek and sometimes she'll go no nope. I'll go that's fine that's okay and I'll ask her before I give her a kiss I'll be like oh let me give you a kiss and sometimes she'll go no I'm busy obviously she wants to say I'm busy but that's what she means yeah. and I just accept that because I never knew how to say no. And that followed me up into being an adult, got me into some pretty crappy situations because I didn't feel I had that authority. And then I had issues with authority because I gave my authority to others. So I definitely will bring, I'll make a lot of mistakes, but I know I will, she'll do a much better job than I do. But that's my main thing so that she knows that she has authority over herself and to challenge me. And I want to know all of it. So this idea of, this old idea of respect, where our parents wanted us to be this respectable version in front of them, I don't want that. I want her to be her and I want to know all of her. And if she makes silly mistakes, if she chooses to smoke, if she chooses to do these things, well, don't hide it from me. That's your choice. You know, we can have a conversation about it, but if you want to make that choice for a while, I might not be happy with it, but it doesn't matter. Ultimately, I'm holding space for you on your journey. And I think that's a big difference, understanding that we aren't this owner and parent of children. They chose us. They've come into the world to learn. So facilitate the learning. Mm. Yeah. And also, you know, when they when they when they choose, to, um, you know, us as parents, they're also um, because there's stuff they need to learn from us. Yeah. 
as as well. So have you ever been back to any of your your past lives or was all your stuff really childhood? No, so um, I do um, past life regression, but I also do like dipping into soul journeying and soul work. So um, looking at where, what started have been from and so a couple of the past lives I've been to, the strangest past life that I went into was as a rabbit. And it was actually when I was doing my training and I felt awful because the lady that I was training with, I did her in, in past life regression and um, she went off on a journey into one of her past lives and then she did me and I went into being a rabbit. <laughs> Just and I was because yeah, your human's always there, isn't it? It doesn't totally turn out. So my human little voice inside was like, "This really isn't fair that you're a rabbit and she's going to ask you questions." And then, then they're like, "What? You know, the part? I mean, it was speaking the truth of what was going on." Was like, "Well, well, I'm a rabbit." <laughs> so she had these questions that she had to ask because that was part of the training. And I was like, "Well, I'm a rabbit. <laughs> I'll do this and I'll do that." And I was like, "Oh man." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a tree in a previous life, in one of my previous lifetimes. So, wow. Yeah. So, so you know, so it just go, you know, and obviously with with the work I've done as well, you know, Pete, you know, we haven't just been humans. No. You know, we have been. Yeah. You know, we have been. Me, me, you know, some people have just been humans, but yeah. others have been many different things. Yeah. And that was so fascinating. It isn't, and that's like how I feel about stones and crystals. Like they've got this little soul, and that's why they disappear when you've you've got what you needed from them because they're off to go and help someone else. Exactly. Yeah, I had, to, I had a beautiful of um, a so I forget what it was. I forget what it was now because obviously it's not mine anymore. And yeah. um, when I went to India, and it was on my necklace, and my necklace just my necklace had never undone itself before. Um, yeah, I still had the cold, but the crystal vanished. Wow. It's like, so that obviously went on, on to help somebody who needed it. Yeah. Um, out then, it's like, oh, maybe I need to get a new one then. Okay, let's go looking for crystals. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that. So, how so, so do you work online or do you work in person with people and you say you've got a business partner and a group so so how does all that work yep so before covid i worked in person that was all that i worked and um, in my business on my own i did hypnotherapy and um working with souls and all things like that and then with my um shared business we did networking events for um spirituality so we would get guest speakers to come in person and deliver a um, little speech about their passion and what their gift was and then everyone would get a chance to network and ask questions and then COVID hit and pretty much 90% of what um, I do solo and with my business partner now is online so we do a lot of um, holistic training and we have a group that's all about empowering women to find that you know that wild woman within because you know we've lost so much even the word virgin like we have this idea that being a virgin is is to have never had sex but if you go back to the the ancient meaning of the word virgin it was the complete opposite it was being totally sexually liberal and being completely independent um so it's working on all of those layers of the witch wound and the mother wound and and really finding who we are under all of the conditioning of life yeah which is beginning to which really is i think beginning to unravel now it's yes. sort of like you know the more feminine side is coming out to balance the masculine because it's not about getting rid of the masculine aspects mm -hmm. it's Definitely. about raising the feminine to be on the same um level um as yeah. the masculine to find that gorgeous balance because the divine masculine is just as beautiful as the divine feminine but we need that gorgeous balance to move forward together and I think it's understanding that the divine feminine that needs healing isn't just in women, it's the divine feminine in, in, in males as well. Yeah. And and again in you know, again in um in in women, you know, it's also the healing of the divine masculine in women wow. and and in men. So it doesn't matter what gender you yeah. are, you identify with or whatever, you, all of us have got an equal amount of male and feminine yeah um we just have to try and get that balance definitely and uh, we're going through a time of a lot of extremes and we have to go to the extreme sometimes so that we can then come back yeah 
yeah, with with you know wisdom, knowledge, and hopefully, hopefully, learning. Yeah, that's the um, thing, isn't it? <laughs> it? It is actually learning, actually learning from it. So you know, yeah, you can go through the dark night of the soul and everything that, but have you learned from it? Yeah. And again, as you said, that's down to the individual. That's not down to your to um, healer, you know, to us as healers or no. uh, um, and that, you know, we as you say, we just facilitate, we hold the space and allow uh, um, the clients to actually do that journey and learn the lessons, same as we've had to do. Yeah, absolutely. And and that. So when you work with with clients do you work a lot intuitively or um uh with, with them so like if, if they if they come to you with a specific thing do you kind of like go do you kind of like go okay i'm just going to work on this or do you allow whatever guidance to come to you to actually work with the client yeah it's intuitive and guidance and um <laughs> i had a client come to me uh, a little over seven weeks ago for for one thing she wanted assistance with weight loss and I'm always really honest when it comes to that and say you know this isn't about losing weight this is about healing whole within the soul this is finding out where the root cause of it is um and then if they want to still continue that's great and I think it was on about session five and before the session when I took my time to prepare and got my cards out and sat with what was coming up I'd got this really clear um telling that this person needed a light body activation and um needed to go into extracting something from a previous life and bringing some um healing through the ancestral line because you know we've got ancestral healing to give but we can also bring healing to ourselves from our ancestral line and afterwards she was like how you know i can't i can't i can't bring the therapy for weight loss and she said we just did a light body activation with with, with all this she was like i said yeah how do you market that <laughs> you? so yeah it, it, it's following that thread of where does this need to go and it's you know unraveling that so that used to frighten me many years ago and i would sometimes ignore what i was given because i think oh no they won't respond to that and now I think it's not my, it's not for me to decide if I'm being told and I'm being guided. I have to trust that or not do the work. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and the knock-on effect is that by doing all the work she's doing, she'll automatically start losing the weight anyway. Yeah, of course, 100%. And, and that. So do you find um, that it's a lot of people, issues, our childhood, or, or their past lives or is it one or the other or a mixture of both i genuinely find it's both so you work your way back and then you have to go through because um and i'm really passionate about saying to people we know our own truth so anything that i'm saying that resonates with you take anything that doesn't no one is an authority when it comes to spirituality because we all get what we're given from spirit we filter that through our human experience. We could both get the exact same thing from spirit, filter it differently. Neither of us are wrong, we're just coming from our experience. So when it comes to finding that thread, we came here knowing what we needed to learn and choosing the life that we were gonna live. So quite often what's present in the not to seven, those pains that we have, we've carried through from a previous life because we need to learn them. So I go back to that point and it's like, yeah, okay, we can heal that, but it's going to keep coming back because it's come from previous lives too. But you're ready. This is the life you're ready to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. That makes, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. And, and of course, you know, Aram, if you're watching this, you know, do, do say hello. And if you've got any questions or comments about what we've been talking about, please do put them in um, so that we can actually um, answer them for you um, to, uh, to, to, maybe, to maybe assist you, you know, there might be something that Lisa's been talking about today that's triggered something in you and you think, oh, just want to make a note of that um, or something, you know, and we will reply um, in the comments and as said, just let us know that you're, you're here watching. Now, as you know, um, I do guide meditations and I read angel oracle cards and each week I like to ask my guests whether they would like me to do a mini guide meditation or pull an oracle card so lisa what would you like me to do for you and those watching i would love you to put an oracle card please 
funny enough, I have them in my hand. Yay! It's like in you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as always, when I do the cards, I the way I work is always for the present and what we need to know for high school in the moment present. Um, I work with the past, but that's to heal and clear the past and understand it so it doesn't affect you in the present. And when I take people into the future, it's to understand and gain clarity in the future that it comes back to the present. So you don't need to worry. So what does Lisa and everyone who's watching this need to know for their high school at this moment in time? Okay. Okay, so we have got traveling lightly, simplify your life. Gorgeous. Isn't that absolutely perfect? Um, and kind of like ties in with what we've been talking about um, as well. So, so what it is, you know, so what it is saying, you know, is we, you don't need to make life complicated. Life really is quite simple we just make we just make it um uh complicated so if we just so it's sort of like saying you no know, just step forward you know the the path is there it's signposted just don't take all the baggage and all the issues with you just know where you want to go um and don't worry about how you're going to get there just start in that path and and, and head towards it um and you'll be amazed at what abundance actually um, comes to you. So don't overcomplicate things. Um, and that's not just for Lisa, that's for everyone um, who's who's watching here. Now, I didn't mention this, um, but do you have any cards near you at the moment? I do. <laughs> I pull a card. I'd love to. Um, I'm going to pull from the rules deck. Oh, lovely. Um, let's see. What? See, Lisa didn't know I was going to ask this. <laughs> I always ask them close to hand. <laughs> Let's see what everyone needs today in their high kids. Oh, this one jumped out. Oh, beautiful. Oh, nice. The anointed. Answer the call, leadership, empowerment, and soul gifts. That's beautiful. So leaning into, it's got almost every element in there as well. Leaning into yourself to really answer that call of, of why you're here and and lead from lead from the things that we hid from as a child. <laughs> I think that's that's the biggest thing. All of those things from a child that we thought we needed to keep locked away. That that's the gorgeous butterfly that comes out. That's our gifts to share. Oh yeah. Exactly. Um, again, you know, that's that's one thing, you know, look at what did you enjoy as a child? What lit you up? What, what, what you know, what were you passionate about? You yeah. know, I've only realised years later, I loved kaleidoscopes as a child. Geometry. Yeah, of course. Which, which is a child you, you know, you didn't, I, I you know, I, I love watching the stars. Astrology, yeah. you, you know, all the, all, this, all the stuff you enjoy doing uh, um, as, a, as a child, when you look back, that can really help you with, with your current life. Um, as as well were they cards by rebecca campbell by any chance yes they're in new ones <laughs> i love them <laughs> yeah I, I, yeah plug for rebecca campbell she does some gorgeous absolutely amazing cards yes. um out, out out there um so um lisa do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers with today just that you are so much more powerful than you realize and you really are the authority of your life you have all of the the keys and everything that you need within you and and that's not saying don't get help because sometimes you really do need to go to someone else and just have them facilitate and kind of hold a mirror up for you to see everything um but just to remember how powerful you are and how magical you are yeah, absolutely beautiful words and a good reminder to all of us. So I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this conversation and found insightful because I know I definitely have. So Lisa, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Yep, um, you can find me over um, at LV Holistic Therapy and that's a website.com or you can um, find that on Facebook. And for the business that I have with my business partner, that's called The Red Sisterhood and we're on Facebook and Instagram. Beautiful. And what I'll do is I'll put to, um, uh, the links in the comments after the after the show so people can just literally click on the link and go straight to you without having to type 
um, ev everything in. So again, thank you so much, Lisa, for sharing your um, your wisdom here. Um, you know, and and do and do check out Lisa. And of course, if you have reached a crossroads in your life and you need some guidance into stepping onto your yeah. spiritual path and getting clear on your journey and how to get there, then I would love to be that guide for you. So please feel free to reach out um, and connect with me so we can arrange a free video clarity call to discuss where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny. And of course, please feel free to join my weekly newsletter and receive a free future life progression recording where I take you into a future lifetime to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life. And there's also a couple of other three free gifts there for you as well. So thank you everyone so much for watching. And I'd like to invite you again to share this video, as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And of course, if you are watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe. Every subscription helps me on YouTube. And of course, hit the bell button to be notified of when the show goes live so you can um, listen to my other guests, amazing guests. Um, and of course, when I also post new guide meditations and I look forward to seeing you all same time, same place next week. And again, thank you, Lisa. Bye.